But this past Thursday, I got the uh, Martin Luther King Clergy Award in my city. And everybody in the city knows Pastor Walt Moss stands out in front of Planned Parenthood on Cleveland Avenue across from our main post office. It's been in the newspaper. And so that's what God has called me to do, to be in people. Sometimes you have to get in people's space. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was at the abortion clinic once in Akron, a man there, one of the, one of the death squad people, he came and got in my face. Well, he was actually on the other side of the driveway. He was trying to get me to he was trying to get me to step over the line and get into their property so he called the police on me. And I mean he was saying some nasty things. We were getting into a little argument and my football almost got into me. <laughs> but God kept me. And so that's all this is a tool to bring information. And that's what I do. I share with others about the scourge of abortion in the African-American community, in the Hispanic community, in the community at large. Well, any baby that is killed is one too many. Amen. Amen. How many of you have seen the, uh, uh, how many of you know Dr. Lau out of Florida? He has a, a DVD called the, I didn't bring it with me, called The Miracle of Life. How many of you have seen that? See, some of y'all got to see it. Now, he has a large version and a short version, 15 minutes, now, I'm producing, produce, I just produced a DVD that I'm giving a message of why I wrote this book. And in that, I just inserted the 15 minute portion of that because I said, Lord, I've got to have something that is more impactful. And when people see that, they get shaken up. Because what he does, he shows an abortion, he doesn't, you know, he just shows abortion tools and he uses a baby doll. And he talks about it. Because folks, we gotta shake some people up. They got to see the truth, amen. amen. I mean, you know, the truth will set you free. Amen. <laughs> now, the African American community dealing with the African American community. Now, there were two things that I saw in our, recently in our African American newspaper out of Akron. It's two things that struck me: black homicide remained at an unacceptable high rate. And then the week before, on this newest one, substance abuse fuels the incarceration rate for black men. Now, I, I uh, matter of fact, my book, the cover of my book was in the magazine uh, for two weeks up through Christmas. And I didn't get anybody to email me, said they'd like to have a copy. I didn't get anybody to call me, but you know what? That's okay. They saw the, they saw the title, Why I'm a Black Pro-Life Pastor. So we do have some issues of, of dealing with the real issue. The real issue is life. The real issue is that God is in charge. <laughs> now, I pray, I pray for our government. And it was interesting, in our Saturday camp repository, there was an article about, the, uh, about uh, politics and people who, are, 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 who claim they believe in God. I kind of preached on this this morning. Now, it, it gave the religious makeup of the hundred uh, of, of this Congress. And it was very interesting, Pastor, because when I read it, it said the House Representative, listen to this, 247 Protestants, 136 Catholics, 22 Jews, 8 Mormons, 2 Buddhists, uh, 2 Muslims, 1 Alexander, 1 Hindu, and one Unitarian Universalist. And then they sent it. 52 Protestants, 27 Catholics, 11 Jews, 7 Mormons, 2 Unpacific, and 1 Buddhist. Now, I said if all these people say they believe in God, even before we got to this Congress here in 2013, if all these people, how can the Protestants and Catholics, how can they vote anything except pro-life? The problem is pride. The problem is they think they know it all. The problem is, you know, I, I preached this, this morning on Uzziah, King Uzziah. He was a great man, but he got the big head. 
And he wanted to go into the temple, and he wanted to do what the priest was supposed to do and light the incense. And the priest warned him, and he didn't listen. And what happened? He became a leper. He became a leper. And so, I always say to people, we're going to reap. The nation is reaping what we have sowed. The African-American community will reap what it has sowed. Half of our population, half of our population have been murdered by the scourge of abortion. So that's why God called me to cry out in the African-American community. This form is awesome, but I need to do this in the African-American community. You think if we invited the African-American community, which we have in different areas, would they come out and talk about abortion being provided? Not, not like numbers like this. But you know what? I'm not discouraged. I'm encouraged. Why? Because you're here today. And we need you. We need you, Catholics. We need you, Protestants. We need the whites. We need the Hispanics. We need the blacks to get on one accord. Amen? Amen. Amen. The babies that I can't see are so precious. And that's what God's called me to cry out for them. I can't see them, but God can. And that's good enough for me. Lastly, I was thinking about presentation. I think about, you know, this is a football season. I'm a former football player. I like basketball. I like baseball. And I was thinking about children and, and babies and, and little kids. Malone University gave out these footballs a couple of years ago when we went to one of their dinners. Uh, my wife's on the board. And I thought about why do we create footballs and basketball and baseball? Amen. We create them for kids. We created them for kids, but yet we kill them. We're killing them. And in the African-American community, it's at a, such an alarming rate. And what's going to happen in 10 years, 4 years, 6 years from now, just what they just experienced in Harlem, uh, the Congress, the African-American Congress, when they ran for office, almost got beat. Because the Hispanic population in New York, in the Harlem area, is increasing. And the African-American, New York City has the largest abortion rate for black babies. If you didn't know that, that's true. And so what is going on is that we're losing our population in New York City and across the country. And so they're talking about politics. Well, if we keep killing our babies, we're not going to have enough, enough, enough African-Americans to vote for you. Why? Because we're counter, we're doing counter of what God wanted us to do. And that's to support life. Amen? Amen. To support these babies and to take out this baby. How old is this baby? Four months. So this baby had been out in the womb now for four months. But yet, when the baby was in the womb, when I, when I wrote in my book, The Development of That Baby, and, amen. When this baby was in the womb, the baby began to hear his mom and dad's voice, began to recognize their voice. So when the baby came out, they were not strangers. Amen. God has a plan. And what we have to do as African Americans, we got to do as Hispanic, we got to do as white, we got to submit to God. We got to submit to God. Amen. amen. Bow your heads, I want to pray. My 15 minutes is up. I can go another story. Hey, I can go another story, but I'm going to stop. Amen. Bow your heads. Father, thank you for these wonderful people here today. Thank you for every family. And Lord, I pray right now, even for a woman that may be here who's having difficult getting pregnant. Lord, I thank you for healing her body. Thank you for her and her husband. Lord, thank you for these people who love life, who love you. And we do pray for our African American community. Stir up the heart of the leader. We pray for Pastor Coffee, the pain leader, the leader of the NAACP, where I spoke at two years ago about this issue, and they were so shocked at the, what's going on in the African American community. But Lord, let them go beyond being shocked. Let them do something. Bless all of these leaders. Bless Jackie. Thank you for her leadership. So, Lord, I pray a blessing upon each one here today. Father, we thank you. We pray for the babies in the womb. Lord, thank God for the abortion clinic uh, Saturday on Martin Street and after the power went out. The power went out. And 
that African American doctor from Columbus. He couldn't do anything. Convict his heart. I've had a chance to talk to him. Convict his heart. The Lord lift us up that we will do your will. Thank you, thank God to give it. Everyone here for the life that you gave us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. Amen. amen.